Hey everybody, it's Miss Beth with the Peabody Public Library. I am ready to do another session of fun with robotics. And today we are gonna be taking a look at just a couple of our different kinds of logic games that we have available. I am so excited that I'm gonna be able to do robotics with the kids um, when school starts in August. So this is just some of those items that I will be bringing throughout the school year for them. Uh, the library owns a ton of different kinds of logic games to get them going. Um, you just have to keep in mind that robotics isn't just about driving a robot around. Uh, there's a lot of makeups to a robot. Um, they have to have a brain, they have to have electricity, they have to have all kinds of things to make them go. A computer in there to tell them what to do, um, us on the outside, programming them, coding them, and um, having them actually display those things that they have been designed to display. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at three different kinds of logic games that the library owns. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look at Circuit Maze, we're gonna be taking a look at Tip Over, as well as the Kaleidoscope Puzzle. So I don't wanna waste any more time. I'm super excited about our class today. So join me on a journey, let's get started. Okay, so we are gonna get started with Circuit Maze. So this is Circuit Maze. I've already taken the shrink wrap off of my game. And now I'm just gonna kind of get in there and see what it all pertains. I am literally doing a reveal and review with you right now because I have not opened this. Um, so I'm gonna start. So it comes with this nice little game board. Um, it also comes with a book to kind of get us along. Um, we have all these cool little circuit pieces um, and it comes with cards. So I'm going to get my cards open. Um, and it comes with these challenge icons and other kinds of cards. So I am going to get these cards open. Hopefully, didn't bring my scissors which I should have learned a valuable lesson last time. Okay, well, if this takes too terribly long, we're gonna have to come back to the cards. Okay, here we go. Got it. All right, so I am opening up my cards. Sorry about that. Literally um, just open this entire game. So here's my cards, here's my book. So I'm gonna read what it says I need to do. Um, the object is for each challenge, you're to build a continuous metal strip pathway from start to finish that lights up the designated beacons on your challenge card. So begin each challenge by identifying which beacons you will use. Um, these are my beacons, these pieces in here. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a, a, a basic card And this is my beginner, so I am gonna follow what my card says to do. So I'm gonna grab a blue. I'm just kind of taking a look at all my pieces here. Oh, it looks like we're gonna need some batteries, so I will have to get us some batteries. So I'm gonna get us all set up, um, and then we are gonna take a look at what exactly our circuit maze can do. Okay, so I was able to get this all set up. I've got batteries in there now. This is the card that we are gonna start with. And the way that it works is, is they're giving us our first three pieces that we need. And then they're saying, we need to add two of these and one of those to make this work. And the challenge is getting the yellow light to come on. So let's see if we can do that. So by following the card, I can see that it has a plus. This is my blue piece that has a plus. So I'm gonna put it there. Um, I'm just gonna set it up the way it is on the grid. So now I'm gonna go to my yellow. And it has plus, plus, minus, minus. So my pluses need to be like that. Um, and then I, and I got all these pieces just right out of my box. And then I'm gonna go with this piece that goes here. So now I need to add two of these curved pieces. 
And then I need to add this to the end. So I need to decide where those pieces should go to get my light to come on. Um, there is a solution on every card on the back, but I really like to get the kids to try to figure this out on their own. So I'm going to start by putting one of my curved pieces right here. And because I'm trying to make a complete circuit, I can clearly see that I need to connect one there. So I'm going to connect this one here. Now to test it, I'm going to need to use the end of my battery pack. And there you go. My yellow light was able to come on. So let's try another one. So I'm going to take my pieces off of here, put them back in my box until I figure out what piece I need next. So I'm going to go on to card two. Um, let me bring it a little closer so you can see what we're doing. This is card two. So these are the pieces that I'm gonna need. So I need to set this up. The challenge is I need to get my green light to come on. And these are the pieces that I need to add. So let me see if we can figure this out. So I'm going to gather up my gray pieces first. And it looks like I have um, one, two, three curves. Looks like I have a cross in my two blues. So I'm going to start with my positive and showing it to go there according to my card. This is going to be my ending spot, which is going to go there. So I need to put this piece here. this piece here, this piece here, and it looks like this piece here. And now it's saying I need to add another curve in my green light. So I'm going to add a curve and grab my green light. And now I need to decide where those need to go. So I think I'm going to put my curve here. And then I'm gonna put my green light here. Nothing happened. So I must have done it wrong. So apparently maybe I need to put my curve here and put my green light here, but nothing happened. So maybe I need to put my green light here. No, let's see. So there's where, this is where the logic comes in because now I have to figure out where this is going to go to make it work for me. And it needs an ending point and a beginning point. So I am determined. Absolutely oh there we go I must have had it right the first time I just didn't have it pushed in all the way so there's my green light so on a reveal this is pretty nice on a reveal um, I mean really on the reveal um, the pieces are very easy to put in place the cards um, they come in a green level which is your beginner level they come in an intermediate level which is a little bit harder uh, they come in advanced and an expert. So you have a lot of different variety of cards. Um, the review of it, I think it's going to be really fun. I think the kids are really going to enjoy um, figuring out how to get this together. And I'm sure there's a whole ton of different variations that this little circuit maze can do. But uh, this is one of our logic games here at the library. And uh, it looks like it's going to be really, really fun for these kids coming up in um, September when we start robotics. So I'm really, really excited about the circuit maze. I think it's going to be a really good addition to um, everything that we offer. And I mean, look how 
look how deep all that is. Um, makes me want to do it, but I'm not going to because I have other ones that I want us to review and reveal today. Um, but this is a really, really fun game and I could see it being fun with a group as well. So the kids could work together on that. So this was all about the circuit maze and it looks like it's going to be fairly easy to work with. Um, I highly recommend it for some simple circuits. another logic type game and today we are looking at or um, another game called tip over the object of this logic game is to get our tippy guy and this is our tippy guy uh, to the red block there's only one red block in the whole thing I have gone ahead and opened up our packaging I have emptied everything out um, and we are gonna start with card one so the way that the game works is in order for our tippy guy, which is the one indicated here, to get to the red, he's going to have to get on these blocks. Um, and the only way he can do that is if they are touching each other. So we are gonna set up our board to look like this. So I'm gonna start with the yellow and it's always, these are how your pieces look. And it's always going to be this side down. Okay. So I am going to start by setting up my board. And it looks like it's going to be fairly easy for us to do. So I am setting up the board the way that it is on here. All right. So I'm going to try to bring this over so you can see. So here's my board and I've set it up. Ah, well, that won't work. Ooh, let me grab my pieces. <laughs> so I've managed to drop them all. Um, I don't know what happened to my green, but we'll just get another one for now. But anyway, I'm setting it up the way that I see it on here. So there's my soups. There's my setup, there's my card, my tippy guy goes here. So hopefully you get a good idea of what it looks like. So here's my card, there's my display, move it a little bit more forward, and now I have to get my guy, and I'll push it over some more, onto the red. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it this way because that's the way it's set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tip over my yellow, which now is making it touch my blue. So now I can get on my blue and I can tip over my blue, which is now touching my green. And I can tip over my green, which is now touching my yellow, touching my yellow and has gotten me to my destination. Um, pretty easy, so let's try another one. Get all my pieces up here. The blue piece goes here. Here's yellow, blue. Here's what my card is before I get it set up. This is what my card looks like. And now I'm setting it up according to the card. My red is in the corner which is ultimately my goal, is to get him to the red. And my tippy guy goes on the blue piece. All right, so now I've got to get my tippy guy over to his red square. So I can only do that by starting, and just so you know, the solutions are on the back and they label these each one of these a number 
and they tell you the direction it goes in. I'm gonna try to do this without that. So really it's only touching my yellow, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that. Well, that won't work because it's not touching anything else. So I'm gonna go this way. Hmm, I don't think that's gonna work either. So I'm gonna take it this way, which is touching this. Hmm, let's set this back up. So let's see. If I go this way, I can touch this and I can touch that, but I can't move that, so that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up, which puts me here. But now that these two are touching, I'm able to move this and I can bring it down, which brings me to my blue, which allows me to tip my blue. And since all of these pieces are touching, I can now go to my green and bring it down, which touches to here and brings me to my red. So in a reveal, I could see where this um, revealing it, um, pulling it out, the pieces are very nice. It comes with this nice little bag to keep all of your pieces in, which I intend to do so I don't have to um, carry the box around with me everywhere. I can keep everything in this handy bag, which is really nice. Uh, the pieces are pretty big, so losing them isn't really gonna be much of an option because um, they're pretty big. They're, they're not going to get lost as easy. Um, I could see where, I mean, if you lose your tippy guy, I mean, you could replace it with something else, um, another game type piece. Um, but he does fit into these squares quite nicely. Um, on a review, um, I could see where younger kids would have a problem with this. I feel like that they would just want to stack these blocks. So this really is geared more towards your second um, grade and up. However, um, I think I might actually try it with the younger kids just to see if they can figure it out. Um, with it having numbers like it does, that by itself would be a challenge for the younger kids. Um, recognition of numbers, especially your kindergartners and first graders. So this might be a game that I would pull out. I am going to still see if the kindergartners want to give it a try. Um, but I do think it would be more successful with second grade or up. So it does come with this handy little book that tells you exactly how to play the game. Um, it isn't a hard game, it's just a logic game, so it's going to make you think quite a bit. So I'm able to put all of my items in my bag, which is really, really nice. Even my cards and my board can go in there. Put all my pieces back in here. Oop, dropped another one. So, all my pieces are in here, and you can clearly see that I have lots and lots of room. Um, these are the same makers of the Rush Hour game, which hopefully we can get into that. And then I pull, oh, I can even put my instructions in there. Like so. And it all fits. So now this is a very easy thing for me to take around with me. I don't have to worry about the box and all of that, although I'm going to keep the box and keep this in there for now. Um, transporting it will not be a problem. So this was all about the tip over logic game. And um, in reveal and reviewing it, I feel like it would be a great thing for the kids to use and learn as well. As some of us adults out there, it's kind of a fun game. So now we're gonna move on to the kaleidoscope puzzle. Little boxes on the hillside, little boxes made of ticky tacky, little boxes, little boxes, little boxes all the same. There's a green one and a pink 
one, and a blue one, and a yellow one, and they're all made out of ticky tacky, and they all look just the same. And the people in the houses all went. To the university, and they all got put in boxes, little box. Okay, last but not least, because we have tons of logic games here at the library, is the kaleidoscope puzzle. So, um, when you work with the kaleidoscope puzzle, it comes with these awesome looking discs. So, we have lots of colorful discs that we can use. Um, it comes with these cards of beginner, intermediate, advanced, and expert. It also comes with um, a manual that tells us how to play. So basically the gist of the puzzle, and we used these last year, and I was able to use it with kindergartners, um, and it worked out really well, is we pick a card, and the object is to get our discs to look like this. Now, just like all the other cards, it does have the solution on the back but we're gonna to try to do it without that solution. So I'm gonna look through my discs and they all have different colors. You can see this one's more of my blue and my green or yellow. This one is more of the red and the blue. Same thing, different place. So each disc is a different color combination. And my goal is to make it look like this. So I'm going to start by choosing a couple of discs that I feel might benefit us. So I'm going to choose that disc and I'm going to choose that disc. Now, um, I'm trying to just kind of speed us up a little bit and I did use the solution to pull these off. The kids would normally just kind of stack them. So we're going to make a purple and um, the red and the yellow. So I'm going to just kind of combine these. And now it is kind of hard to see in this lighting. That was one of the issues that we were having um, last year. So this is actually the solution and you can see I was able to make it. There's my red, my purple and my yellow. Um, aiming it up to the light will help you see your colors a little better. So I usually provide the kids with some kind of flashlight. So let me grab a flashlight. So I just have a standard flashlight, Dollar Tree brand. And now I'm able to kind of shine it through, see if I'm getting my colors. But really the best way to do it is just to shine it up here and see it. And you can. Very cool. So let's try one more card. We're gonna go with a red, orange, blue combo. So I think that we are gonna need this disc. Now the kids would have to put these to, the discs together to actually see it come to life. Um, and we're gonna use this disc. So these are the two discs that I've chosen to use. And we're gonna have this one this way and this one that way. So now here's what I was going for and here's what I have. So I can shine it up to the light and I can see all of my colors. In revealing this, this is a really, really fun um, reveal, very easy setup, lots of discs, lots of cards, very, very fun. Um, in review, the kids have a blast with it. They really enjoy making their own colors. 
as well as creating um, what is actually on the cards. So this was definitely a good game for them to use. I would highly recommend it. I think this could be for all ages. Um, and this was all about the kaleidoscope puzzle.